from their origins to their infamy. Stay tuned to number one to find out 10 things you didn't know about the Rat Pack. Number 10. The name wasn't originally theirs. The name of a group can tell you a lot of things about a group, which is why band names are so important nowadays and even back then. But despite the picture of Sinatra, Martin, Davis, and a few others being associated with the name The Rat Pack, it actually didn't start with them. Or at least, not all of them. The real story of the name comes from way back in Hollywood history and features Humphrey Bogart, the man, the myth, the legend, and his pals. Judy Garland, David Niven, Angie Dickinson, talent agent Swifty Lazar, restaurateur Mike Romanoff, and Frank Sinatra. As for how the name came to be, Bogart's wife and true love, Lauren Bacall, walked in on the group one day and when they were really drunk, she noted, you look like a goddamn rat pack. They actually dug the name and Bacall would repeat it a bit later when they weren't so drunk and thus the name came to be. Oh, but it wasn't just a name. The group became something more, a legend of sorts. They even had their own coat of arms and roles to every single member, even Bacall. It wasn't until Bogart passed away that Sinatra became the leader and members Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop joined. It was that group that made the name truly famous, but they weren't the ones who made the name. Number nine, Frank Sinatra inspired Scooby-Doo. One of the interesting things about being famous is that sometimes you inspire characters just by being yourself. We've all seen it, and we all know characters who were based on real-life people in one form or another. But ironically, Frank Sinatra was the one who inspired one of the greatest cartoon characters of all time. Scooby-Doo, no joke. How did this happen? Well, it all started when Sinatra wrote and sang his song, Strangers in the Night. During the song, he ad-libbed a bit where he did a scat number, singing Doobie Dooby Doo. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar? Fast forward a little and animator Iwao Takamoto was working on animating what would be Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And when he heard that scat verse, he thought of Scooby's name and of course, when he gets Scooby Snacks and becomes brave, he screams out, scooby dooby doo That all sounds a little too crazy, doesn't it? But it's true. And of course, just like Sinatra is one of the most legendary singers of all time, Scooby-Doo is an iconic character that has withstood the test of time and continues to have new material. So thanks, old blue eyes. Here's a Scooby snack in your honor. Number eight, the pack stands together. Before we talk about their friendship, take a moment to like this video and join the Zero to Hero community by using the buttons below. Make no mistake, while the Rat Pack was an incredible group together, they all had their own individual fame. They weren't famous because they were the Rat Pack, they were famous, and then they got together to be even more famous as the Rat Pack. To that end, they knew that people would want to see them together as much as possible, so they made sure that that happened as much as possible. Anytime one of the five members came to Las Vegas to sing a show, the other members would do their best to show up as well and do a performance or two for the crowd. You might think this is vanity, but when you look at it from the perspective of business, it was very clever especially when Vegas promoters would tease that some of the other members of the Rat Pack would potentially show up. And this teasing brought in a lot of people who wanted to see the group perform or even just see some of them perform. Due to this, their shows sold out constantly. Not all of them sold out, mind you, but a vast majority did. This brought many people to Las Vegas and some would even stay in their cars to wait until the performances happened so that they didn't miss out. Number seven, Dean Martin was a kid at heart. In the group, Dean Martin was referred to as King of Cool, and for many reasons. Not the least of which was that he portrayed a bad boy image in public, which earned him a lot of clout, and a lot of women. He was too cool in many ways, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't somewhat childlike in some of the things he did. For example, before he was in the Rat Pack singing, he was part of a legendary comedy duo with Jerry Lewis, and a lot of people forget that. But it doesn't stop there, for Dean Martin has a secret love of comic books. That's right, he would love to read comics aplenty. However, because of his image, he knew it wouldn't be good for him to go and get them himself, so he got Jerry Lewis to do it for him. Nothing says friendship like buying comics for your buddy so he can keep his image intact. 
Oh, and if that wasn't enough, he used to be a Boy Scout. Number 6. Lawford and the Kennedys Another irony of the group is that some of them were famous because of their connections to famous people or other famous family members. The best example of this came from Peter Lawford, who was the brother-in-law to John F. Kennedy, aka the former President of the United States of America. Yeah, that's a pretty good connection to have, don't you think? Not so ironically, because of the Kennedy connection, Kennedy would sometimes come to Vegas to hang out with the group. That would have been a sight to see. And to play up the arrival, when Kennedy would come to join them, they would be called the Jack Pack. However, this did come at a cost. Mainly, Frank Sinatra was associated with the mob in certain ways, and the Kennedys tried to get him to stop with this activity, but Sinatra either refuted or refused the accusations and claims. And because of this, Lawford was eventually kicked out of the Rat Pack. Number 5. They Never Drank Alcohol During Performances There was a lot of beliefs and perception about who the Rat Pack was and what they did both on and off stage. Their offstage antics were legendary, such as Frank Sinatra ordering 300 Bloody Marys from room service for a party once. And all of them, especially Sinatra and Dean, were legendary womanizers. These acts led many to believe that their acts on stage were actually very loose and spontaneous, that they didn't plan anything and just shot from the hip, so to speak. But apparently, this was all an act. According to Tina Sinatra, Frank's daughter, her father, and the other Rat Pack members were consummate professionals. Every show was thoroughly planned. And when it came to the drinks Frank and Dean were having, every show, it was either juice or tea. Joey Bishop himself said that he never ever saw any of the guys drunk during a performance, and Tina added that none of them had a sip of alcohol the day of the performance. After, yes. Before, no. Sometimes image only goes so far, and they knew that. That's why they were the kings of Vegas. Number 4. Joey Wrote the Jokes When you think of the Rat Pack, you think most often of Sinatra, Martin, and Davis Jr. But there's no doubt that Joey Bishop played a big role in the group despite being the less eccentric of the bunch. Meaning he didn't push things as far when it came to what he himself did on stage. But when he wrote for others? He had no issues pushing the jokes however far the guys would be willing to go. He honestly wrote most of the jokes for the group, which shows his talent many times fold. He was also fiercely loyal, and was never afraid to defend his friends when the time came. As the motto of the Rat Pack went, never rat on a rat. And Joey never did. Number 3. Sammy Davis Jr. Broke Barriers Sammy Davis Jr. was known as Mr. Show Business, and that was a title he well and truly earned. He had to fight for his fame given the racial climate of the 50s and 60s and beyond, but he always did it with a smile on his face and a song in his heart and a dance ready to go on his feet. But arguably one of the most famous moments of his life was when he cameoed on an episode of the famous TV series All in the Family. Archie Bunker was a racist, and he didn't hide that nor did the writing staff. So one day, Sammy Davis Jr. came onto an episode of the show and had a scene where he was going to take a picture with Archie Bunker to get support from him and other people in the neighborhood. But just before the picture was taken, Davis Jr. leaned in and kissed Archie on the cheek. A big no-no in many ways back then, but the moment is now one of the most iconic scenes in TV history, and that episode of All in the Family got nominated for two Emmys. Number 2. They Never Referred to Themselves as the Rat Pack Ironic, isn't it? But it's true. The group of Sinatra, Martin, Davis, Lawford, and Bishop never, ever referred to themselves as the Rat Pack. They just didn't. But it stuck because Sinatra was a member of the original group, and he was noted to have become the leader after Bogart died. So when he made his new group of friends, the name transferred over in the media, and the rest is history. But to them, the five that made up the Rat Pack, they refused to call themselves that. Rather, they would call themselves the Summit Four, or the Clan, or whatever they felt was best at the time. Yet the media kept calling them the Rat Pack, and the name stuck for over 50 years. One time, during a reunion tour with the group, a journalist asked them a question and called them the Rat Pack, and Sinatra snapped back at the reporter for saying that stupid phrase. Many celebrities today can relate to this kind of thing as they're often given nicknames that they don't want but are stuck with. Number 1. Their Passing 
Sadly, not all facts about the Rat Pack are good, and one of the saddest facts of all in concerns to them is in regards to how its three most prominent members, Sinatra, Martin, and Davis Jr., all passed away within a few years of each other, in the 1990s in fact. The first to pass away was Sammy Davis Jr., who succumbed to throat cancer of all things in 1990. Then, five years later, Dean Martin would fall to respiratory failure in 1995, and finally, in 1998, Frank Sinatra would have a heart attack and pass away soon after. It was definitely a sad decade for those who loved the renowned group, and yet it's hard to deny that even though it had been basically 50 years since their heyday, they were still remembered fondly, and their legacy is one that will never be taken from them. So, as Humphrey Bogart would say, here's looking at you, kid. Did you ever listen to music from the Rat Pack? Let us know in the comments below and take care.